So this is question number six from the 2012 AP Calculus Multiple Choice Set. And in this question, what they tell us is we've got a particle moving along the x-axis. So that's a pretty typical opening line. They give us the velocity function. So they won't always give you the same exact thing in a question that involves motion like this. Sometimes they give you a position function, sometimes velocity, which is the case here. Sometimes they give you acceleration. So we definitely are dealing with velocity here. And the question is, what's the total distance traveled by this particle from time zero to time three? So there is something that you have to make sure you realize about a question involving total distance, which is what we're asked to find here. If the motion is not all in the same direction, we need to make sure we change the sign of any of the distance traveled that was actually covered in the negative direction. So if you have a road that's traveling east-west and you start at the origin and you travel two miles up the road to a gas station, uh, two miles to the east on the road, I should say, to a gas station, and then you travel one mile back to the west on that same road toward the origin, your total distance traveled is three miles, two miles to the gas station, one mile back toward your starting point, but your change in position is just one mile. The integral of velocity is going to give you a signed distance, so displacement, uh, which would be the one mile, we have to make sure we change the sign of any of the velocities that are, are actually negative because we want to continue to accumulate positive distance traveled when the question involves total distance. So this, this particular situation has kind of a tricky layer to it because we are looking for total distance. So we're considering it on the interval from zero to three. So the question becomes, does the velocity ever change signs? anywhere between zero and three. If it does, we're gonna have to make sure any of the velocity that was over, any of the velocities that were negative become positive before we do our integral calculation. So I just kind of reasoned out what this graph was gonna look like. So I realized it was a parabola. I realized it was gonna open downward because of the negative coefficient of t squared. And then I thought, well, it's pretty easy to figure out what the zeros of that parabola are. This factors pretty nicely and I can easily confirm that the, the times when this graph is going to be at the x-axis or the t-axis is going to be at time zero and at time six. So that tells me that my downward opening parabola touches the x-axis in these two spots. And from zero to three, I am dealing with exclusively positive velocities on that entire stretch of time. So in, in a time situation, as the AP exam would be, it's, it's frustrating to have to waste time to kind of confirm something like this. Uh, but that would definitely be the best course of action for a problem that is worded this way. Uh, so from this point, what we can go ahead and do is start doing our integral. We don't really need to worry about absolute values because we don't have any negative velocity values to begin with. So we use FTC part one, right? Fundamental theorem of calculus, find the antiderivative of the velocity function, which is this, uh, toss in the upper limit of integration, toss in the lower limit of integration, take your difference, and we get this answer. So the, the procedure at the end was pretty quick. It was just a matter of doing the legwork to figure out if there were any velocities that were ever negative within this time frame.